Today we're going to talk about the flex, the staccato flex. This will improve your playing with any chord you know, but it's really to get us ready for bar chords. But um, if I was to play you this right now, I'm going to bar all six strings, and I lift my finger up. I didn't leave the string. I just lift it off the, you know, the lift up on the pressure, and it kills, it kills the sound. Um, before we go building a bar chord with that, I could take an E chord and lift up. Of course, I only have three fingers there, so some of the strings might keep ringing. So my right hand will mute with it. Staccato, like a drop of water, pop, 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 continually. So whenever my left hand goes to do something, my right hand does it with it, and vice versa. So you're muting with the left hand, the right hand should back it up. It's just the way it is. They work together and that kind of um, builds better timing and feel and so on. Okay, you understand that. So you can take that with any chord you know and strum and flex. I'm lifting up on the pressure here. And at the same time, my right hand just drops on the string and shuts it up. Um, any chord that's difficult, um, practice doing that, and um, you'll, it'll start coming around. It starts coming out with meaning. So let's go back up here again and bar the fifth fret. All right, I'm barring. I'm holding it down. And when I'm holding it down, I'm not holding it down for all I'm worth. It's really hurting my hands. I just kind of give it a little squeeze, a flex, and I let go. I kind of look at my finger as a wet hair laying across all six strings. It just kind of, you know, conforms each string. I'm not like pressing down. And once you start getting this, you'll realize you have it because if you're playing bar chords now or you're not because they're too hard to play because you're squeezing too tight, you're trying to get this feel. You got to use this flex. I can't tell you how important it is. So now I'm going to take finger one on the fifth fret again. He's taking the place of the nut. Okay. And I'm going to build an E chord there, like you see an E chord here. You play it like that, like I usually do. It's like seeing it like this now, and finger one is free to bar the fifth fret. So this is an E type bar chord, because it looks like an E chord with a bar on it. Okay, and it's on the A fret, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. So it's an A chord. And then I flex. I strum and flex. I can do that quickly. I'm going to count four. One, two, three, four, one, two, You can do 30 of those a night. You're going to get bar chords before you know it. If you do it a hundred times a night, yeah, you'll have a record contract by tomorrow morning. So when I do this, and I say a hundred, a hundred should not be like, oh, a hundred. I mean, come on, listen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean, how long would a hundred take? Of course, it's easy for me, and it might be tough for you, so it might be a little frustrating, so a hundred might take a little time. But then do fifty. But either way, you have to remember this, because it'll help build all chords, not just bar chords. Playing without straining. So if I'm doing any kind of bar chord, so the flex also gives me a breath of fresh air. It, it makes me um, rejuvenated. If I just keep that bar down, I'm squeezing the whole time, I'm running out of air, I'm, I'm, I'm not rejuvenated, I'm just I'm running out of time. So if you do this flex thing, you'll be as good as me before you know it. squeezing really tight and it's killing your hand, you're doing it wrong. And we all go through this. But a good teacher should be able to get you through this if you're get through get it get you through it quickly 
I mean, we shouldn't be in a rush with this, but things that frustrate us, I mean, come on, who wants to deal with it? But if you can get this flex thing happening, all chords that you learn will eventually come around. It's, it's add pressure and take off. And the bar chord is a rite of passage. Nowadays, with the power chord being all over the place, <coughs> at the top of the bar chord, you're not, um, it's a lot easier. Uh, in my day, every song had bar chords in it, or every other song had it. Nowadays, you can use a power chord to get through that. And that's fine if you're having fun. But if you really want to get serious, I mean, barring is, like I said, a right a passage. It's, it's, a, a, it's a, a level to get to. We had the 12 bar here a while ago. You can do that with the 12 bar, this flex thing. <coughs> Strumming four um, strums per measure, you know, strum, flex. I'm not going to play the 12 bar for you now, but you can check that out. Or it's just, you know, you can create your own two chord exercises back and forth with your open chords or your bar. So every time I do that, I can see the flex. And my palm is coming down every time, right afterwards, just to support. And it makes me work better rhythmically. Okay, so if you're not doing the full bar chords, just the finger one. Or you can hold as long as you want. I can do it anywhere. And instead of going, oh, this is boring, or what do I need, you know, just try it, get used to it, because once you have it, you won't be without it. And like I say, whenever you practice anything and you're just getting going, try to keep a count of what you're doing. Did you do it 10 times? Did you do it 20 times? And the re like for my students who I see weekly, I'll say, how did that go? And they'll say, oh, it was tough. And I'll say, well, how much did you practice it? They might say, well, maybe only three days. I mean, the person who says five days is probably going to be way ahead of the person on you to two days. So I always say, I'm going to ask you, how many times did you do it? When you sat down to play, did you do it 10 times, 20 times? If they say less than 10, they frustrate very easily. And I understand that's what these short lessons are about. Um, just giving you fun things that, that might get you further on or, you know, you're having fun. Fun through learning. Um, learning through fun. So, if you're doing this flex stuff, try to keep a count. If you're, if you're doing it 10 times, you don't notice much, well, try it 50 times and maybe you might be surprised. I mean, there's 10. So it's not a big deal. What I'm trying to get you to do is kind of, um, it's muscle control instead of just muscle, you know, where you're just squeezing down and you know your hands cramping and like I said if you're getting those cramps and stuff uh, you're applying too much pressure like throwing a ball harder than it need to be thrown so it doesn't go straight it goes flying off to whatever um, and you all know what I'm talking about when I say that male or female alright so once again flex and count four staccato if you can get the bar chord in if you don't have the bar yet I mean, just work on this. This will help you with all your chords. I can't tell you how much it will. It'll clean up a chord passage if you start being aware of your staccato flex. Uh, we'll talk more down the road, but in the meantime, you have your work cut out for you. So remember, 10 a day is good, 30 is better. But keep a record how much you do. Just like if you're doing sit-ups, you know. If I said, how many did you do? And you said, I only did, I don't, well, I don't remember. I mean, that's you, you got to see what's working, what will work for you. Um, and if you're looking for the easy way out, well, uh, then uh, keep a count then because at least you can do the minimum to see what helps you. In the meantime, good luck and I'll see you the next time.